Good morning. It is 6 a.m. Rise and shine. It is very chilly outside. Be prepared for that. And we're going to check in with Mike very soon to see how the rest of your day will go. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you at 6 a.m. on your Tuesday, February 6th. Thank you for joining us this morning. We start with some sad news from overnight. Country music star and singer songwriter Toby Keith has died. According to a statement posted on the country singers website, Keith, who was battling stomach cancer, passed away peacefully last night, surrounded by family. He was diagnosed with cancer back in 2022. The six foot four singer broke out in the country golden years of the 1990s. Among his 20 number ones were How Do You Like Me Now, Should Have Been a Cowboy, As Good As I Once Was, and Beer For My Horse is a duet with Willie Nelson. Toby Keith was 62 years old. And let's go ahead and get a check in with traffic. Uh, it's been a busy morning for RJ Marcus. Yeah, guys, especially around the Bamsey area. So just got a quick update here from Transguide, and they just told me that they are sending a hazmat crew out there at uh, this crash here involving an 18-wheeler at uh, 35 at Space Center, the northbound lanes. So it's going to be at least uh, two, three hours before they get this reopened. Right now, all the main lanes, 35 northbound at Space Center Drive are shut down. You see this overturned 18-wheeler. We have uh, been reporting earlier that in, that this crash involved another vehicle. Still haven't gotten a lot of details on the uh, other vehicle that was involved in this crash, but right now in terms of our traffic situation, we are looking at a major shutdown here for our drivers in the Bamsey area around the uh, east side if you are heading up to the northeast side. Let's show you what this looks like in our maps and obviously with traffic now starting to build out in that area, we are seeing some pretty significant delays. So you're going to have to exit uh, Ritterman Road right now. If you're going up 35 and you're going to exit Ritterman Road right at Bins Engelman. Another option would be to take Seguin Road. That basically becomes FM 58 and you could go up 410 Northeast Loop 410. But again, that's going to take you a little ways around uh, this crash. So I want to go back real quick and show you just the backup that we have here now at uh, 35 and Benz Engelman. Again, the Ritterman Road exit is right there. Um, and again, this is now just going to be a major problem there for our drivers in the Bamsey area as you're making your way out uh, throughout your Tuesday morning commute. The rest of the city, things looking okay. Want to update? Uh, we'll update you guys here in a little bit the rest of the city seeing a couple of stalled vehicles on the west side but again biggest thing that we're following at the moment here 35 northbound at space center drive all main lanes that are blocked they have a hazmat crew headed out there right now so this is going to take a couple of hours before we get anything cleared out there for our drivers in the bamsey area guys back to you Wow, not a good situation. Thank you very much, sir. All right, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous morning out there. It's definitely on the chilly side. We've got temperatures in the 30s and 40s. This is pretty much our normal low right now. Clear skies, light wind, dry air, and that's what allowed temperatures to drop down. So we're overall about 10 degrees lower than what it was yesterday. Yesterday, temperatures stayed up because of all those winds out there. A pair of 36 is out in Kerrville. Comfort, 36 also burning stage. A little bit of a wind chill in places. Not much, but just enough with these uh, winds, you know, only five, seven, eight miles per hour. Otherwise, no wind to uh, speak of. And so, again, that's what's allowing temperatures to drop down. And then a huge warm up throughout the day. Mold is on the low side. Big surprise. Mountain Cedar is also on the low side after the those really strong winds we had throughout the day Sunday as well as yesterday. But hey, maybe the season's coming to an early end. We can only keep our fingers crossed for that. This morning temperatures, we may fluctuate another degree or two and then warm up quite quickly. We'll already be up to 64 degrees, so we're going to gain about 20 between now and noon and then add to that and get up to 69 later on this afternoon. So a little bit on the uh, warm side of normal. Probably the best day of the next seven days is going to be today. Tomorrow, not bad. A little more humidity. Then it gets sort of dampish, the best way to put it, toward the end of the week. And we'll talk about some rain chances coming in here this weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police say two men were shot late last night while they were trying to drive away from a Northside convenience store. Happened around 10 o'clock near the intersection of Blanco and Hildebrand. Police the teens were on their way from the store to a friend's house when shots rang out, hitting the driver in the head and back and a passenger twice in his side. A third person inside the car wasn't hurt. The victims drove to a nearby gas station to call for help and were taken to a hospital. So far, there is no description of any suspect. A homemade wood burning sauna being blamed now for a house fire on the city's northeast side. This happened just after 1 a.m. on Castle Throne Drive near Eisenhower Road. Fire crews tell us that the homemade sauna was left on and caught the home's overhang on fire before it spread to the attic. Three people were able to get out of there 
with no injuries and will be staying with family. The home suffered around thirty to forty thousand dollars in damage. The Bear County Sheriff now talking about District Attorney Joe Gonzalez's involvement with the Wren Collective. We've been looking into the Austin based criminal justice reform group and its founders conversations with the DA's office since last week. That's when Sheriff Javier Salazar sent Gonzalez a letter about being mentioned in those messages. Salazar is referenced several times in the 200 plus pages of messages obtained by KSAT. That includes text between Gonzalez, his first assistant and the Ring Collectus founder Jessica Brand. In one of those messages, the D goes into DA rather goes into detail about a conversation with the sheriff. The sheriff says he has spoken to the DA about those messages. He doesn't feel that he was acting as my attorney in that moment. And so uh, there was no necessarily attorney client privilege protection of any statements made there. However, with that being said, I reiterated to him that, well, I still considered that a, a private conversation that I just didn't appreciate being shared with somebody that I have no clue who they are. And to be quite frank, uh, some of the things that I saw on the coverage that you all provided on KSAT really worried me about this organization. We are told Salazar's attorney also sent a cease and desist letter to the Wren Collective. You can find all of our reporting, including the DA's interview with KSAT on the Wren Collective and a closer look at their messages right now on KSAT.com. Now to the ongoing battle to pass legislation over the southern border and U.S. immigration policies. Republicans and Democrats have come up with a bipartisan plan to address border concerns. However, as ABC's Ike Ajachi reports, some lawmakers in the House say the bill is still, still dead on arrival. This morning, it's being called the most sweeping border security package in decades, but it appears to be going nowhere. In a meeting with Republicans last night, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell reportedly recommended a no vote on the first procedural vote set for Wednesday, just hours after he advocated for the bill on the Senate floor. And it's now time for Congress to take action on supplemental national security legislation that finally meets those challenges head on. A bipartisan group of senators unveiling the $118 billion package that adds $20 billion to strengthen border security, hiring new officers and border patrol agents. It also includes a trigger mechanism that automatically shuts down the border if migrant apprehensions reach 5,000 a day. The bill also contains $60 billion for Ukraine and $14 billion for Israel. The conservative border patrol union endorsing the deal and its acting commissioner says it provides them with the strongest set of tools we have had in decades. New doubts from Senate Republicans followed days of pressure from former President Trump to kill the bill. This is a, a Democrat trap. It's a trap for Republicans that would be so stupid, so foolish to sign a bill like this. This bill can't be signed. House Speaker Mike Johnson also doing an about face. In November, he pushed for a bipartisan agreement. Now, he calls the bill a waste of time and dead on arrival. I just don't believe that the Senate bill, as I've explained in all of our statements, meets the criteria that's necessary to solve the problem. President Biden with a clear message to Speaker Johnson. Pay attention to what the Senate is doing. We got a bipartisan deal all this time, and now they're starting about the, about the border. It's out of control. Well, guess what? Everything in that bipartisan bill gives me control. This current battle over the border leaves wartime funding for Ukraine and Israel up in the air. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, the deadline has passed to register to vote in next month's state primary election. However, there's new deadlines coming up. To apply for a mail-in ballot, you have until February 23rd. Also, you can vote early from February 20th through March 1st. Election day is March 5th. We have all that voting information and all the places where you can vote early on our website at KSAT.com. Before we go to break, break, opening day of the rodeo is this Thursday. And if you are a KSAT insider, you can get free grounds admission that day. We have a story on our website with all the details, but you have to be a KSAT insider to get the deal. If you're not a member, signing up is super easy. Also, KSAT.com, you're going to find our detailed guide to the times and lineups of stock shows and rodeo performances. You're also going to see a map of the grounds of Freeman Coliseum and the Frostbank Center, including where to park. Plus, you're going to find out about freebies and other promotions. The rodeo runs through February 25th. Nine minutes past the hour, 44 degrees. Well, to come, our San Antonio Spurs are taking off for their 
annual rodeo road trip, the advice veterans on the team have for rookies like Victor Wimbayama. And after the break, the Brahmas are back. We'll look at this year's schedule for the new United Football League before the season opener in the Alamo Dome. And looking out there with live cam, just in case you forgot, it's still winter and it's still February. It's 44 degrees for you this morning, but things will warm up a little this afternoon. We'll be right back. In morning sports, Wade Phillips and the San Antonio Brahmas will open up training camp later this month before kicking off the season in the new United Football League. USFL and XFL merged to form the UFL, and the league has released its 40-game regular season schedule that starts next month. The Brahmas are bringing in former Bernie quarterback Quinton Dormady, and here's what Wade said about him a couple weeks back when he stopped by KSAT. Yeah, Quentin, uh, unfortunately, played on a team that wasn't, wasn't, didn't have much offensive line. But uh, if you look at last season, uh, he beat D.C., who was undefeated at the time, uh, uh, threw for 300-something yards in that game. And then he also beat Arlington, who won it all. Uh, you know, so two of the games he won, and he didn't get to play the whole season in Orlando. So uh, two of the games he won, he was outstanding in. So uh, we're looking forward to him uh, really contributing. Brahmas will open the regular season at home Sunday, March 31st with the D.C. Defenders at 11 a.m. Week two is their first road game April 6th against the Memphis Showboats at 11 a.m. And they'll close out the regular season week 10 on Saturday, June 1st at the St. Louis Battlehawks. Conference championships are June 8th and 9th with the UFL championship set for Sunday, June 16th. For the Brahmas complete schedule, head to the sports page at ksat.com. Spurs are all set for their annual rodeo road trip, which this season features nine games starting tomorrow night and ending February 27th at Minnesota. Some of the guys like Keldon Johnson, Devin Vassell, and Doug McDermott know what to expect since they've already taken part in a rodeo road trip. But for others like rook, rookie Victor Winbinyama, they've never been on this long of a road trip in the NBA. So what advice does McDermott have for the youngsters before they leave town with nearly a month in between home games? Yeah, I mean, we've been on some long road trips this year already, so I think they kind of got a little bit of a warm-up. And it helps that our all-star break is in the middle, um, or kind of splitting it a little bit, um, so that helps. Um, but still, yeah, you just got to be prepared to pack a ton and be ready to shop if you need to. <laughs> yep, I was in the Chicago Circus trip, and it seemed like it happened a little earlier, like more December-ish, or I, I forgot, but it wasn't February, but I remember being overwhelmed as a young player, um, just being gone from my friends and family for that long, and now I'm pretty used to it. Some would argue that we have players with some experience, but no clear veterans. Uh, so the Spurs are at Miami for a 6.30 start on Wednesday, then a quick turnaround to face the Orlando Magic. Six o'clock start on Thursday night. Good luck, guys, and go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. Well, time now, 6.16, and there was a shot on Transkype where I-35 mm -hmm. looked like a parking lot. Let's check back with RJ. Yeah, we'll show you that here in a bit. Uh, real quick, I think that Spurs road trip spanning 8,000 miles or so this year, so it's going to be a, it's always an interesting road trip for the uh, San Antonio Spurs. Uh, well, speaking of the roads right now, looking at 35 and Space Center, and what we're looking at here is uh, we've been following this throughout the morning. We have an 18-wheeler that uh, reportedly crashed with another vehicle, caused a rollover of that 18-wheeler, and right now, uh, last at last check, we were told that uh, hazmat crews are actually headed out there to the scene because of a cargo spill. So again, trying just trying to get more details, but the biggest thing right now is that traffic northbound on 35 at Space Center Drive is completely shut down at the moment. You see traffic in through the access road here, but um, again, 35 northbound at Space Center Drive traffic is shut down there for our drivers in the Bamsey area. The shot that Stephanie was just sort of referring to right there is at 35 at Ben Zingelman. And uh, this is important because this is actually where traffic is being diverted at the moment. This is the Riddiman Road exit. And you could just see right here from 35 northbound here right at Ben Zingelman. We're not seeing any traffic get through that area. I want to let you know about some alternate routes. We mentioned that Riddiman Road um, exit right there. But we also have, if you want to try and get around this through 410, you can try and get on Seguin Road all the way up to Northeast Loop 410. But we are starting to see some traffic build up in that area, especially where 410 and 35 intersect. Uh, the rest of the city, things looking pretty good. Don't want to forget about our other drivers, but uh, nothing major right now. A couple of disabled vehicles here and there, but nothing uh, major to the point uh, wow. that's kind of worth reporting. This is obviously the biggest thing that we're following at the moment. Without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Thank you, RJ. You know, even this morning earlier, 
that was moving a little bit and just as traffic, it, oh. It's worse. It's you a lot worse now. Yeah, you add to the volume and here we are. Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, hitting the bus this morning, make sure you grab a jacket and it's one of those days because you won't need it later on this afternoon. We are going to be gaining basically 25, 30 degrees across the board. 42 starting off this morning, all the way up to 69. And plenty of sunshine out there. Today, as I've been saying, is going to be the prettiest day, I think, of the next seven days. Well, not bad. Close second place. So, all right, take a look at, I love this picture from yesterday and the oh, caption, pretty. the last remaining light. <laughs> kind of waxing a little poetic there. So I like that one. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect shot. Beautiful view out there at the airport as of right now. All right, Justin had put together a great graphic yesterday. And as of yesterday, we've had just over seven and a half inches of rain so far this year. Obviously five and a third above average. Compare that to the past three years. Last year, only an inch and a third, slightly below average for the same period. And a little bit more in a couple of years ago, but then you even go back to 2021 and only an inch of rain through this time. And so with this is the third wettest period from the 1st of January through the 5th of February. And of course that on the heels as far as January itself is concerned. That was the second wettest January on record. Now we just got to keep it going. Long range computer models going into from the Climate Prediction Center for next week do have things leaning toward the uh, the wetter side and this will be toward the end of the week. And then as far as temperatures in that same time period, staying a little bit on the below normal side and then even going in through Valentine's Day and in through that following weekend. Things are leaning toward being a little bit on the, the wetter side as well as still on the cooler side for that time period. So if that long range works out, that would be fantastic. Here's what's going on, at least for the next week. So we've had this nice northwesterly flow. Now the ridge is building on in here, and that's going to allow things to warm up a little bit more. So we're going to be right around 70, give or take, for the rest of the week. And then the humidity is going to start to work its way back on in here, especially down here at the surface. Then we get some of these disturbances coming on through and it's going to be a similar situation to what we had last weekend with the the humidity built back in here. We had the rainmaker come on in here with these disturbances sliding on through here and that's going to be the situation on Saturday. The better chance for some rain a couple of leftovers on Sunday. Then as you can see we get this somewhat of a front that comes through here knocks temperatures down and this is the time period we're looking at that next six to ten days on the long range computer models would keep us on the cooler side of things. And like I said by late next week then a chance for a couple of uh, couple of showers here and there. So once again today nothing but sunshine make it up through the 60s at noon 69 for a high temperature and then going in through the rest of the week humidity comes back in here tomorrow. We will have a few extra clouds hanging around here tomorrow. Then a lot of clouds on Thursday, Friday, some morning fog, maybe a couple of sprinkles here and there throughout the day. Better kind of just dampish sort of weather. Better chance for some rain on Saturday, not a rain out. And then Sunday that uh, that day that the Lions aren't playing in some football game. Uh, well, a couple <laughs> leftover showers early in the day and still 72, but then cooler starting off next week. So look at that. We see the football there on Sunday. How yeah. nice of you, Mike. There you go. Thank you so much. Two mediocre teams, not the Lions. Are <laughs> wow. People will be watching. Uh, some people are going to argue. Uh, 621, 43 degrees. Just ahead, this year's Super Bowl is expected to bring the largest audience ever and brands are paying up to $7 million for just 30 seconds of airtime. That's next in your GMA first look. See what you're gonna miss, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> Kate made progress with her mental health, but her medication caused unintentional movements in her face, hands, and feet called tardive dyskinesia, or TD. So her doctor prescribed Osteto XR, a once daily TD treatment for adults. As you go with Osteto XR significantly reduced Kate's TD movements. Some people saw a response as early as two weeks. With Osteto XR, Kate can stay on her mental health meds. Oh, hi, buddy. Osteto XR can cause depression, suicidal thoughts, or actions in patients with Huntington's disease. Pay close attention to and call your doctor if you become depressed, have sudden changes in mood, or have suicidal thoughts. Don't take if you have liver problems, are taking reserpine, tetrabenazine, or valbenazine. Osteto XR may cause irregular or fast heartbeat or abnormal movements. Seek help for fever, stiff muscles, problems thinking, or sweating. Common side effects include inflammation of the nose and throat, insomnia, and sleepiness. 
your doctor for Osteto XR. In this morning's GMA First Look, could this be the biggest Super Bowl ads battle of all time? I'm sorry. I'm having a blast. This year, we're seeing a lot of big mainstay brands finally come off the sidelines and into the game. With a potentially record-setting audience, two incredibly popular teams, and the Taylor Swift factor. It's the ultimate three-ring circus for advertisers between the game itself, the megastar halftime show and Usher, and all that Taylor Swift brings to the table is like nothing else. And at as much as $7 million per 30-second ad, every moment counts. It seems each year the advertisers are getting their money's worth and more. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on this Super Bowl ad, Battle Royale. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer headlines, YouTube TV is expanding support for its highest video quality yet, the 1080p enhanced option, now available on many channels for users with updated 4K compatible streaming devices. Boosted quality initially started appearing last year ahead of it this wider rollout. Tinder is out with new warnings. The advisories will notify younger users when they are being inappropriate. Tinder says the warnings will be three categories, authenticity, respectfulness, and inclusiveness. The updates will specifically target the app's main users, ages 18 through 25. And The Simpsons being credited with another correct prediction. This time, the new Apple Vision Pro headset, a very similar looking device, was worn by several characters, leading to all sorts of chaos in a 2016 episode called Friends and Family. Oh my goodness. That's right on target again. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of a, a funny cartoon clip there. Time now, 627 and 43 degrees for now. If you're just now tuning in or waking up, we've got big problems at I-35 at Space Center. If that doesn't sound familiar, it's over there generally in the Bamsi area. We've had problems there all morning long, not going anywhere anytime soon. RJ has an update straight ahead. Welcome back and good morning. We have a pretty sunrise out there right now, but this camera is looking towards downtown. And the essential message this morning is it's about 10 degrees colder than it was yesterday morning. Yes, you can tell the difference when you step outside. Hey, good morning. It is 630 and it's Tuesday, February 6th. Let's go to the man who is nodding his head vigorously. Mike Ostrage is here in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Are we starting with traffic first of all? Oh, we yeah. are. We're here we go. Sorry, we see you here, Micah. We're tossing to you. <laughs> Sorry, RJ. Yeah, uh, no, no worries. Uh, I want to obviously update people on everything that's going on here on the east side in the Bamsi area. We have a 18-wheeler uh, crash that has shut down the northbound lanes, all northbound lanes of 35 at uh, Space Center Drive. And uh, the big story here is that we are now getting updates that a hazmat crew is headed out to this area. We were told earlier that there was some cargo that spilled. Not sure exactly what spilled on the road, but either way, a hazmat crew is headed out there right now. So this is going to be shutting down the northbound parts of uh, 35 at Space Center um, for the next couple of hours or so at least. So just trying to follow the very latest activity there. want to show you another shot here from uh, further south of this. And right now traffic is being diverted off of Ritterman Road on 35. So if you're headed up anytime uh, when next, uh, you know, couple minutes or so, 15 minutes or so, and you run into this, just keep in mind that Ritterman Road is going to be kind of the exit here off of 35. That's right there at Ben Zingelman. So we mentioned Ritterman Road. Obviously, you could also take Seguin Road. That'll get you up to 410, but now traffic is starting to build here on uh, Northeast Loop 410. There's also Hol Holbrook Road, which will get you up to uh, to the Ritterman Road area. But again, not really any any great options to let you know about if you have to head on this area. I know the at t Center Parkway or, excuse me, Frost Bank Center Drive, that'll actually get you all the way up to 410 as well. So there are some options if you just kind of plan ahead a little bit, but just keep in mind, this is going to be out there for some time. One other thing to let you know about right now, we do have a stalled vehicle, Loop 410 eastbound at Highway 151. This is going to be for our drivers that are coming down from the SeaWorld area and coming south on Loop 410. But again, biggest story we're following right now, 35 northbound at Space Center Drive in the Bamsi area. All northbound main lanes are shut down due to an 18-wheeler crash. It's going to be a few hours before they get that cleared out. Mike, how are things looking outside? A lot better than that. Thank you very much, sir. You know, it wasn't uh, too many days ago when we weren't even seeing the glow of the morning sunrise at this time of the morning, but 
We are now. It's going to be spectacular out there. That nice little orange line right there along the horizon and the uh, planet Venus off there. Uh, 43 degrees. Normal low temperature. Grab a jacket. Dew points at 40. So we'll may fluctuate a degree or two. But we can't drop down below that number and a slight bit of a breeze out there. So a hint of a wind chill in spots down to 34 right now in comfort. So in your backyard, it may be actually touching freezing out there. 45 New Braun Falls 42 right now in Divine. And again, that little Little bit of a wind chill in a couple of spots feels like 36 right now in Hondo and 40 is the wind chill here in town. Not much of a breeze, but just enough. And in many spots where there is no wind, that really allows the heaviest, coldest air to settle down here to the surface, which is why temperatures have dropped down somewhat in comfort over the past couple of hours. Mold Mountain Cedar both on the low side. Updated counts going to be coming out a little bit later on this morning. So chilly or just downright cold start and then beautiful and warm. We are going to be gaining 25, 30 degrees across the board, so no jacket by later on today. Tomorrow, still a decent day. You're going to have some more clouds around here, and the humidity is going to begin its return. So that means we're going to have some morning fog, and on Thursday, Friday, even a little sprinkle here or there too, straight little shower both those days, and it is going to be warm and very warm, especially the morning low temperatures, thanks to all that humidity and cloud cover. Then we go into the weekend. There's going to be a couple of scattered showers around here on Saturday, perhaps a couple of leftovers on Sunday, and it's also going to be on the mild side this weekend. Then we'll chill down next week, but we'll go through all the numbers and all the details for the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. And now to a top story that we brought you at the start of GMSA, country music star and singer-songwriter Toby Keith has died. According to a statement posted on the country singer's website, Keith, who was battling stomach cancer, passed peacefully on Monday, surrounded by his family. He was diagnosed with the cancer in 2022. The singer broke out in the country golden years of the 1990s. Among his 20 number one Billboard hits were How Do You Like Me Now, Should Have Been a Cowboy, as good as I once was, and Beer for My Horses, which was a duet with Willie Nelson. Toby Keith was 62 years old. An 18-year-old man took his own life moments after being cornered by U.S. Marshals here in San Antonio on the far west side last night. That teen had two active murder warrants and was the target of those investigators at a house near Cap Mountain and Bobcat Pass off West Military late yesterday. When Marshals tried to go into the home and arrest him, they heard a gunshot Investigators then flew a drone into the house, which showed them the teen had shot himself. We're not exactly sure which murders the warrants were related to, but an officer on scene, the crimes were recent crimes. I was yelling for Rachel to wake up, and then she wasn't waking up. And so I, I, I get up and I, I turn her over, and her eyes were rolling back. That was just the beginning of the nightmare for a couple from San Antonio. Anthony Grigsby and his girlfriend Rachel Villarreal should have been home about three weeks ago. Instead, they're stuck in Mexico City for what was supposed to be a fun vacation. Right now, Rachel's in a hospital fighting for her life after Anthony says she was drugged while they were sightseeing. As Stefania Jimenez tells us, Anthony is praying he and Rachel return home soon. January 14th marks the last time Anthony Grigsby saw his girlfriend smile. Anthony and Rachel Villarreal were enjoying a colorful boat ride at Lago Huetzalín in Mexico City. When they arrived at La Isla de las Muñecas, they saw people drinking, so they went to a stand and bought alcohol. They came and presented us with a tray of four shots, two for me, two for her. I'm, I'm taking a picture on Instagram, and then we proceeded to take them. Anthony says after that, they walked around and took in the sights. Everything seemed fine until Rachel began to feel sick. She's kind of complaining of like nausea, st uh, stomach aches. And the symptoms intensified. The next day, Anthony says he felt sick. Both thought they were battling food poisoning. But things took a turn for the worse the next day when Anthony says he woke up and found Rachel on the floor unconscious. I get up and I, I turn her over and... Her eyes were rolling back. That's when I see like three large welts on her head. So Anthony called an ambulance. That was January 16th. Rachel's been in the hospital since. She nearly died. Her kidneys were shutting down. After days in the ICU, doctors told Anthony that Rachel had neurological deterioration, usually associated with strokes. But Anthony's biggest shock came when doctors performed a toxicology screening on Rachel. Results showed that she had meth and ecstasy in her system. 
After speaking with doctors and retracing their steps, Anthony says this is the last time he remembers them being fine. So he suspects the alcohol they drank that night was tainted. It's still hard for him to believe. This unfortunately happened to us and this is our story. Thankfully, Rachel is gaining consciousness. Now, Anthony says he's focused on making sure they both make it home to San Antonio safely. I just want people to be aware that these things happen and that they need to take a lot of extra precaution when they are traveling out of the country. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. Anthony told KSAT last night that Rachel is finally walking. He's hoping to get her transferred to a hospital here in San Antonio later this week. And this story is not uncommon. Back in 2017, the U.S. State Department warned travelers going to Mexico about tainted alcohol after a number of tourists said they got sick or blacked out after drinking. You can find the full story right now on KSAT.com. Well, at the Justice Center later this morning, there will be several cases that we will be watching. First, closing arguments are expected in the Fabian Lopez intoxication manslaughter case. Lopez accused of causing a deadly drunk driving accident in 2022 that killed 27-year-old Robert Gutierrez. Both sides rested yesterday after the defense claimed the driver of the car Gutierrez was in was responsible for the wreck as he was three times the legal limit. But an eyewitness for the state testified Lopez ran a red light causing the accident. If found guilty, Lopez faces two to 20 years in prison. And in the 379th District Court, the trial is underway for Felix Jesus Hernandez. He is accused of fatally shooting and dumping the body of 42-year-old Victoria Stampley in January of 2022. Testimony began late yesterday afternoon in this case. If found guilty, Hernandez faces up to life in prison. Remember when every single SAISD school shut down for two days after district-wide heating problems just last month? Well, KSAT went looking for answers. After those closures, a district superintendent, Jaime Aquino, stressed the need for transparency to make sure this kind of thing never happens again. So in the spirit of transparency, KSAT requested internal emails and texts between Aquino and district employees. And we're being told those records will come at a price. For $2,319, the district would process our request for that information. The district is asking for that full payment while maintaining the ability to ask state officials to not release those records. Over 1,000 emails could be uncovered if the request goes through. So while the SAISD superintendent may be talking about transparency, it comes with a price tag. The district told KSET last night if it does seek a ruling and is told to withhold records, the amount spent on those records would be reimbursed. Time check, 640, 44 degrees. And here's San Antonio, get your jazz hands ready. One of the biggest Broadway musicals is coming to town. A look at Chicago coming up. There's something so special about a classic in Chicago. The musical is that. So when you come here to the Harlequin Theater, I know that you're going to want to get up and dance. People have told me that this is their favorite show and they can't wait to come see a local community do it, especially on a military base. As a military spouse, like I wanted to come to a, a military base and see something as spectacular as this. And Chicago has great songs. Everybody knows all that jazz. They know when you're good to mama. They know all of these wonderful razzle dazzle and they just like to sing along. And it's a great place to do it because the Harlequin is the best. People have all, you know, they, they have their favorite song. They have their favorite character. Um, I don't know, I think it's just something that resonates with everybody, with the music. Well, I think there's always been a fascination with the 1920s, that roaring era where everything was bigger and better. Skirts are short and there's so much energy in life. And of course there's murder, so everybody loves to have a little mischief. I was really nervous at first and I was like, well, you know, let's do this. Like, why not? Like, she's an iconic character and I feel like I can bring something to her that will be a lot of fun. Chicago runs for two weeks from February 9th through the 18th. For ticket information, you know where to go. Our website, ksat.com. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. It's now quarter to seven. Let's go ahead and check back with RJ.
All right, guys, yeah, for the past couple hours or so, we've been following this major crash here. 35 northbound is still shut down there at uh, Ben Zingelman all the way up to Space Center Drive. You're looking at the backup here in this area. So traffic being diverted right now to uh, Riddiman Road. That's just one of the alternate routes that we're looking at at the moment. So again, northbound main lanes of 35 shut down because of an 18-wheeler crash from earlier this morning. This is a look at that crash there out there at Space Center Drive. So just got off the phone with TransGuide. They said that hopefully within the next 30 to 45 minutes or so they'll be able to open one of those left lanes on 35. But again, right now, 35 northbound is shut down in that area. Uh, you could take Seguin Road up to 410, but you could see, guys, that traffic in going up 35 and also 410 right now uh, pretty backed up there. And uh, this is kind of just the biggest thing we've been following throughout the morning. Again, yeah. hazmat crews are on the scene right now, and uh, hopefully they can get this cleared out um, or at least get that one lane open to get some of that traffic moving through there within the next uh, 30 to 45 minutes. This one. happened at 1 in the morning, right? 1 in the morning. Yes, wow. and cargo spilled. They initially were trying to figure out what the cargo was, and then they realized that it was some sort of a chemical that was on the road, so obviously had to get hazmat out there. And Maybe fuel spilled well. too, you yeah. don't know. Yeah. From yeah. The Definitely. Semi, yeah. mm -hmm. so. All right. right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. With rodeo coming up, this picture just says it all. I absolutely love this oh, that's shot. Pretty. Horses and a sunrise. Kind of, kind of says it all right there. It's mm -hmm. a great shot. Thank you so very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture. All right. Speaking of sunrises, this one's pretty darn nice as well. No horses, unfortunately, in the in the picture. But yeah, grab your sunglasses, grab a coat because it is chilly out there. And then once that sun gets up a little bit higher in the sky, it's going to warm things up very quickly throughout the course of the morning. And really, nothing but sunshine all day long. Maybe a couple little high wispy clouds or sort of that kind of milky shade to the sky, but it's just going to be really, really pretty out there. Already we gain basically 20 degrees by noon and then top off at 69 later on today. So across the board, it's going to be 25, 30 degrees. Always a good indication that we got a lot of dry air in place because it doesn't hold the heat in, but then it heats up quite easily in the afternoon. That's going to be a different situation for the next few mornings, especially getting into Thursday, Friday, Saturday, because the humidity is going to be going up and that will start tomorrow throughout the course of the day. It's still going to be a decent day, cooler in the morning, but then these uh, dew point numbers getting up into the mid upper 50s, 60s by Friday. It'll try to come down a little bit and then notice by next week we do have somewhat of a front trying to slide on through here. It's not necessarily a big blast of cold air, but it will get rid of some of the humidity and that then is going to uh, allow temperatures to be on the, the cooler side, especially for the low temperatures coming up in the mornings. So jump ahead. This is what it looks like on Thursday. A couple little sprinkly showers around here. I know that this long range computer model kind of broad brushes things, but we're going to have enough moisture coming back on in here from the Gulf of Mexico to where we have not only some fog in the morning, but yeah, a sprinkle here or there is going to be possible. That'll be the same thing on Friday, maybe just, you know, one or two of them and probably some of this model doesn't even really like to pick up. But then we get into Saturday. That's going to be a better chance for some rain. Now, I know just looking at that, it looks rather ominous that it's going to be rain everywhere. This is just where the rain chances do exist on Saturday. And as you can see, kind of same old song and dance. A lot of this is going to be further off to the east, and it will definitely not be any sort of a rain out on Saturday. Just again, a few of those showers here and there, maybe a couple leftovers on uh, Sunday as well later on in the, uh, the morning hours, but then we'll start to uh, clear on out in behind that. So if you are planning on heading to the rodeo starting on Thursday, it's going to be kind of that dampish day. A lot of humidity out there. Like I said, some fog in the morning today. Best day of the next seven. Monday's not going to be bad either. Tomorrow, clouds start to increase. And then, like I said, kind of a damp day on Thursday, Friday, about the same situation. And we have that chance for a couple of showers on Saturday. And if you want to stick around and watch the game the Lions aren't in on Sunday, <laughs> uh, it will be at 72, but then cooler starting off next week. So. Gotcha. Well, a lot of people will be, Mike. They'll be watching Sunday. Oh yeah. yeah. Remember, you can always watch for the commercials. That's, I know. that's yeah, the thing for a lot of people. Uh, but don't forget, start of the rodeo. We're going to be there I say live, live, yeah. and we got our special that night there. Yes. Yeah, so it'll, it'll be, be fun great. again for rodeo you. Time. <laughs> He's a busy boy. Yes. 650, 43 degrees. Let's look out there with live cam. Like Mark said, we're starting in the 40s. A beautiful shot out there. Remember to grab that coat. We'll be right back.
Are you ready to rodeo? Crews laid the groundwork for the next three weeks of festivities over at Frostbank Center. And did you know that the dirt is recycled? It's been used in every rodeo here dating back to 1988. So crews blend in sand and other materials to make sure the surface is perfect for all rodeo athletes. And remember, KSET will show the rodeo's opening night, a competition on Thursday. Coverage starts at 7, followed by an hour-long rodeo special at 9 before the night beat starts at 10. You can tune in on air, on our website, or any of our streaming platforms. We know some of you want more info, so scan the QR code to find out everything you need to know. We've got a complete breakdown of transportation, tickets, musical acts, and much, much more on our website right now. All right, time now, 6.54, and still a big mess on I-35. Yeah, guys, especially for our drivers in the Bamsi area, something we've been following past couple of hours or so. This crash actually happened around 1 o'clock this morning. An 18-wheeler further up the road, 35, crashed with another vehicle there at Space Center Drive. So all, basically what that means is that we have a full shutdown, 35 main lanes at Ben Zingelman. So traffic, being is, di traffic is being diverted right now to the uh, Ritterman Road. So you're not going to get through any part of 35 right now in that area if you are headed up to the northeast side. 35 at Ben Zingelman, traffic is shut down in that area. A couple other things to let you know about. We have a stalled vehicle, Loop 410 eastbound, starting to cause a little bit of traffic there on 151, a little bit of a backup there uh, in that area. Usually gets pretty busy around this time of day. And one other stalled vehicle let you know about 90 eastbound at 36th Street on the west side. But we will continue to follow this 18-wheeler uh, crash. They said that uh, hopefully they can open up at least one of these lanes northbound 35 within the next uh, 30 minutes or so look we'll at, update you during our seven o'clock hour. Yeah, look at that sea of brake lights out there. What a mess. Yeah, no kidding. You're back to the rodeo very quickly. Do you know, the number that always stuns me is about $250 million in scholarships over the years. Oh, yeah. That's and then the yearly economic impact to the city is, yeah. is in the tens of millions of dollars as well. 43 right now, 30s in parts of the Hill Country. Grab a coat and then we're going to have a huge warm, a little bit of a wind chill in places. We make it all the way up to 69 later on today. Great looking day today. Humidity works its way back in your tomorrow kind of dampish you know morning fog thursday friday a couple of showers on saturday and if you are heading out to the rodeo not bad it will be cooler next week i think we didn't notice you took that football off <laughs> of the, of the <laughs> super bowl still sunday we'll see you guys <laughs>